was so vocal and why would anybody that's in the government or any person that's truly loyal to the government and the president uh you know have any problem with somebody that is no because you know there's doing a lot his of, job <laughs> no there's a lot of psychophancy going on mm. around mm. and sometimes people look at it uh you can't tell what's really going on mm. whether is somebody who is passionate or just another psychopath? No, no, but for me, that can I, anybody that knows me will tell you that um, I, 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 I fear only God. I have tremendous affection for my president because I believe in him, his vision, and I believe the hand of God is upon him. And that for me is very important. Now, let me put it on. Yeah, and also, Charlie, yeah. there's also one principle which I live by, very important, the spiritual principle. If you're loyal to your boss, hmm, God will raise men and women to be loyal to you when your time comes for yeah, leadership. It, it works for me. It, it's it's <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> when your time comes, God will raise men. So for me, it's a very spiritual thing. It's a deep thing. And, and again, why am I loyal? Why am I passionate? To me, this is not just a job. It's about my country. It's about my country. It's about my future. I made a choice to live in this country. You see, that was why I asked in the beginning whether your other colleagues share your passion. Because uh, he knows the mm. problem I've been going through mm. in that my little corner mm. called P-Man. Yeah. And uh, the kind of intrigue that can happen. Mm. I, I look at uh, that union as mm. a mini Nigeria. Mm. And then I try now to imagine what Mr. President mm. will be going mm. through himself. Okay, you see. And uh, that was also why I asked you, I mean, um, uh, the relationship with your, uh, with your colleagues mm. in, the, in the State House, mm. the intrigues, mm. well, well, and the other kind, sure. how do you deal with all of this? Let me tell you this, interesting, maybe I've been fully equipped to cope with some of these things, because like I said, I was born into a political family. And um, like I said earlier, I, I, I went through hard school training. Um, if I may say so myself, I'm actually quite a hard guy. I'm a tough guy, mm. you know. And I, and I, but 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 I, I and I don't get involved in unnecessary battles. If you don't like me, you don't have to like me. If I'm working with you, you don't have to like me. We happen to be working together in the same government, and therefore it doesn't matter if you like me. Do your job. Let me do my job. You know, and really, I must be honest with you, I've never had any problem with any colleague of mine in government, really. Because I think it's very clear from my style and the way I do my thing, that whether you like it or not, I'll do what I think I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm doing it in the interest of Mr. President for the right reasons, I will continue to do it. And it is only the person that is paying my salary, that is Mr. President. And of course, the Chief of Staff, who is my direct boss, General Abdullahi Mohammed. Huh? Um, uh, who, who is in a position to, uh, in any way, uh, talk to me about the nature of my work, you know. And, and a lot of my work is also very, very covert because I work closely with the DGSS, who is a big brother to me and, you know, has been absolutely wonderful. Um, elements and security agencies, because it's gathering information. We gather information, I share information, I pass it on. In fact, I'm an honorary member of the security services, if you like, because we need to protect the Nigerian state. You know, I'm also close to the leadership of the armed forces, because we have to, the public domain, the public affairs covers everything. I need to be able to defend the police, the army, the intelligence agencies. I need to be able to defend what they're doing. I need to be able to defend my principal, Mr. President. I need to be able to defend the villa, the chief of staff, anybody in government, the minister of information, anybody. And in order to defend, you need to have all the facts. So I spend a lot of time literally going through files, records, gathering information. And that's the really hard work. The easiest part is talking. And then there's the other aspect. You say, oh, if they call him, he will make a comment on whatever issue. Now, my style and what I believe strongly is this, that the people have a right to know. Gone are the days where government officials say, I have no comment, and put the thing. Why don't you have a comment? This is a democracy. State the case, unless you don't believe in the policy. State the case and tell the people why Mr. President has done A, B, C, D, E. And I don't think government officials should be so, you know, uh, distant from the people. You need to have access. You need the information. You need an explanation. You deserve an explanation. So when you say, oh, he's talking too much, what do you want? If I don't talk, you'll say, 
he's not doing his job you see government doesn't want to talk about anything they're not telling us what they're doing they're just doing it anyway but what i talked to now say he's talking too much and you know the area is those that hate the president that often make this complaint but in terms of internal injuries I, I just don't get involved because i'm not there to play games i'm there to work having, having said that having said that i just want to um, uh, um, touch on this have there been any, been any decisions mr president mm -hmm. has made that you have disagreed with mm -hmm. and if yes how have you had let it? me tell you there's a principle in governance which is a, a, a you know it's a general principle and it's called the principle of collective responsibility um, there is absolutely no way that anybody in government, in the cabinet or in the villa, has any right whatsoever to come out publicly to say he disagrees with Mr. President's policy A, B, C, D, or E. For me, everything Mr. President is doing, he enunciated before he was given a second mandate. I'm talking internally now. No, no, yeah. Internally, that's why it's a collective responsibility, public. They won't speak publicly. But before a decision is arrived at, I assure you, contrary to what a lot of people think, there's a lot of internal consultation. Mr. President will just get up one morning and come up with a policy. Okay, let's, let's, you know, he, let's, he consults and, and, and some people place. inside may disagree. Then the matter is debated within. Once the matter is debated and the policy is enunciated and established, and it is in accordance with his vision for Nigeria, you know, it's, it's made public, and nobody has the right in government to now start criticizing it. Okay. But of course, there must be division of opinion within, but the president is the boss. He makes the decision. Once he's made the decision, we fall in line, and we defend it. Now, let's ask that question in a roundabout way. Has there been any situation whereby you've gone and said something or done something, and it didn't quite go down well with Mr. President? <laughs> quite a number of times, of course. <laughs> In the yeah. sense that, no, I mean, definitely, you know, if, if, if I have uh, quite a number of times, I said, well, uh, you know, said, could we or could I? And he said, no, you are wrong. Do it this way. And he's always been proved right. No, 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 no. I mean, after you've done it. Okay. Like, <laughs> no, you now go back. Why, Why did you do it like, like that? I have, if you're asking me if I've ever been queried by Mr. President, is that the question? Yeah, something yes. like that. Yes. The truth is that I have never been queried by Mr. President. I'm never? I've done never. Never. He has never frowned at something. I'm not saying he's never frowned. I can't be 100% right. Unofficial query. Nah. <laughs> but he's been, he's been, even where I've made mistakes, clear mistakes, yeah. the president has been very kind to me, very gentle to me, and he's allowed me to learn. There's some Would you like to share those mistakes? Ah, my brother. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some things I did when I first, when I first came in, that if the situation arose again, I'll do it in a different way. Yeah. And I think he's been leading men for... Look, this is a man that took the surrender of the Igbo Biafran forces, you know, in 1960. But it's so funny. when you talk about Mr. President you know, as unforgiven, but he has a reputation for being un, so unforgiven. Okay, let's, let's be specific. Why, what, okay, what has he done? Uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, 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 let me tell you. They say, okay, they say that one in respect of... In the sort of maybe the civil war, I be some people say he doesn't like Igbos now. Let, 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 let. Okay, fine. Now look at what look at look at the situation on the ground. Let me know. Look at the situation on the ground. Okay, today you have a 42-year-old Igbo man who is the governor of Central Bank. That's Soludo. Brilliant man, and he's doing a great job. Mr. President puts him there, the one that hates Igbos. Today you have Madame Due Process, who has saved this country over. What are billions of naira in terms of inflated contracts? She has blocked people from stealing and chopping money as they used to do in the past. Mr. President hates Igbos, but she's an Igbo and she has that very powerful, very sensitive office. You know, I mean, I could go on and on the and on. Minister of Finance. Well, we're well, even talking from that uh, the tribal no. perspective. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, let, but a lot of people do say that. So let me develop the point. Minister of Finance, because Mr. President hates Igbos, he puts a minister, an Igbo Minister of Finance, who is doing a great job, you know, because Mr. President hates Igbos, you know, he has so many uh, friends in the eastern part of the country, particularly the Igbo governors that are so close to him, not all, but most, 
you know, I mean, I could go on and on. The Igbos in this government, in Mr. President's government, have done. Because Mr. President hates Mr. Igbos, he has one of the most decent and refined people in government. And I want to be on record as saying this. He's a friend of mine. I stand by him through thick and thin. That's Andy Uba, special assist, uh, senior special assistant to the president on presidential matters. One of the most misrepresented people in this administration. An absolute gentleman and a professional. And he's doing a great job and he's totally loyal to Mr. President. Despite what everybody says or things you read about him in the newspapers. But because Mr. President doesn't like Igbo people, he has somebody like Andy working closely with him, you know, night and day, doing such a great job. So, it, you know, when people say things like that, I just look. Mm. Uh, some have said uh, it might end up being another Oputa panel. In fact, uh, just to put that, actually, one of the, one of the members, uh, <laughs> once again. Uh, but what we are afraid of is, is this not just another avenue to waste taxpayers' money? Uh -oh. um, what will come out of it? Will, they, will their finances be shot? No, not at all. I, 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 first of all, the findings will not be shoved under the carpet. Um, these are distinguished men, highly experienced men and women, um, carefully selected, uh, appointed, um, some of them elected by their state governors, some by the federal government representing civil institutions. These are, these are great minds and you cannot sweep such, such, such things under the carpet. Um, once they come with a recommendation, which will be based on consensus, they give it to Mr. President.